Hello YouTube, welcome back. Um, this video is uh, one for the modelers out there, so the model developers, potentially users as well. One thing that we find is when trying to build out driver-based models or trying to build out detail within a model, what we find is there's a bit of um, inability to deal with corkscrews. Now, you know, if you've been a fin financial modeler for a little bit of time, you'll you'll have a you know an understanding of what corkscrews are. We'll cover what it is in this video, and also we'll cover why it, we find that it's not something that gets um, it, it was readily doable in other pieces of software, and why we always keep coming back to um, Excel. Explaining the topic of a corkscrew. It's um, any accumulating balance or any balance where you're building and taking away a balance. So if you think about something like a bank uh, where they have a loan book, that's a common one. So, you know, you're adding more loans to the loan balance. You're taking away as people repay. Um, SaaS companies, you're adding users or adding logos or adding companies. You know, if any of that phraseology is familiar. But um you're adding and then you're churning away um, users and it might be you know losing uh, or attrition of clients or it could be churning to new products or you know you could churning be losing clients out as churn again hopefully phraseology is familiar um, but basically anything that you're building a balance that needs to be added to or subtracted to over time now this is very hard to do in in um, other pieces of software I've, I've tried and I've really struggled um, and I keep coming back to Excel. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through an example of that you know, within Excel and using Medano. Again, Medano is a model building platform. Um, we're going to build a basic example of a corkscrew. Um, I'll maybe leverage off the example I just talked about then. Um, so if we go, um, I'm going to build myself a model with a time series. So let, let me bring a time series in now. There's a lot of time series here for you. For those of you that are familiar with Madonna, you might be aware of um, some of how this works, um, but we're going to just go off on monthly forecast. Monthly forecast is the easiest um, thing to look at or for forecast only is the easiest to look at because you're not dealing with actuals. Um, we'll cover that kind of stuff um, in other videos, but what we've got ourselves is a time series. Um, I'm going to put my, uh, I'm going to put in a, an empty module. Again, we like to, play around with revenue here. So let's just uh, look at revenue. Um, you know what, in this instance, let's let's look at units. Um, so if we go volumes and we'll go units, um, I'm gonna put this into a monthly time series. Let's look at units and building up the number of units that flow into revenue. Um, you know, that's why it didn't start on revenue. So let's just go um, widgets. We're again, selling widgets. If we give, us our, give ourselves um, some space here. Now, uh, I could have start this, started this up as a layout. Um, we have a video on blocks and layouts and how that works in a model. So, you know, uh, jump over to that um, video if you want a bit of a, a refresher or an introduction to it. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to build a corkscrew. Now, Technically, you can actually build a corkscrew because, you know, remember, um, again, if you look at the video, you will understand that um, layouts are actually just um, sets of blocks. So technically, you can build out your block um, or you can build out your corkscrew in blocks or a layout. Now, for simplicity, I'm going to build it out in layout so we can understand the corkscrew by itself um, and how it works in Excel. Um, so we're going to uh, we've got our units. We're going to insert a layout section. So we're going to lay these widgets out. And what we're going to do is then create a corkscrew balance. So if I look at it this way, now I'm going to give myself an opening balance. I'm going to give myself additions. We're going to do subtractions or churn or, you know, it could be any, any terminology you want to use. Um, but I'm just going to keep it, uh, keep the terminology simple. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We're going to create the corkscrew. So this is the accumulation and um, accumulating balance. Now we're going to add and subtract manually. 
remember the model can uh, or w with models you can build drivers that link in so you might have um, um, that fed off a funnel or marketing funnel so you know additions could come from a marketing funnel for each um, for each product or it could be marketing spend where it's here's the dollar value of spend conversion rates so on and so forth um, but for simplicity um, we're going to do amounts and you know, I'll, I'll often say amounts this this is an amount it's not driven what we're going to do is and this is what you can't seem to do in a lot of um, other software and and I do understand why it is um, because a lot of other software is database driven so as you key in assumptions as you input in uh, numbers um, these numbers get stored in a database as a data entry um, it's built in a different way like data entries are done on tables um, which is why you can't get this effect as easily i have seen people um, be able to do it but it is just a lot more complex and a lot more convoluted really um, unfortunately um, and hopefully you know uh, down the track that gets resolved and we can put all everything on the cloud we all like cloud-based stuff but um, you know in the meantime this is what, gonna, what we're going to have so um what we're going to do is we're going to create the corkscrew. So we're going to uh, work out the number of widget based clients or the number of volumes of widget based clients. So this, you know, an ex a real life example might be um, we're selling widgets. Um, they're done on subscription and they're done to um, a consistent client base that is always, um, you know, buying the same set. Um, bit of a weird example. Maybe it's, uh, you know, if we think um, software as a service, you know, the number of cumulative software as a service clients that are on a subscription. That's probably the best example, but uh, you know, just, I think widgets are fine. Um, so what I've done here is I've referenced the previous closing balance. So that is the corkscrew effect where we use the pre um, opening, it references the prior close and that's what creates that corkscrew. So you've got this down and then you've got this across. So down, across, down and across, and then this is the core screw that gets created. So anyway, what we'll also do is, um, and and how you format things like this will come down to um, a set of standards for your own firm. But what we tend to do is all inputs are done naturally based on the label. So for example, we've got additions and subtractions. So a positive data end point for additions is increasing. A positive subtraction, data point for a subtraction, is negative. So we formularize this to deal with the fact that it's um, you know, positive and negative. So I'm going to take my opening balance, I'm going to add my uh, addition, and I'm going to subtract my subtractions. Um, so now we have a corkscrew. So for example, if the marketing goal is to put on 10, client, uh, 10 of these clients um, every month, we've got 10 clients added. Um, every month and we now have an addition. So 10 additions every month, the balance grows by 10. That's the beginning of the corkscrew. And this is oddly hard on database um, types of modeling packages. So oddly enough, Excel wins in this one. Um, then we're gonna do the same thing here for subtractions. I'm gonna, um, let's say we are pretty good, 10% um, month on month, it's actually not, it's, it's not bad, but um, let's just use that as the example. So now you can see we're adding 10, we're losing one in the period, um, and that effect is accumulating over time. Um, you know, prior to that, we ended December 22 with 120. We, um, by, um, you know, using losing one per month, we've um, landed on 108 for the end of the period. Um, now, this is important because this gets us our units. Um, we can then take these units and use them within different modules. We can put them to a pricing module um, or put them to a revenue module. So linking them to a revenue module where we can um, leverage the numbers that we have here and apply pricing to it so you can actually get to a revenue figure. Um, so that's the concept of corkscrewing in a model and the concept uh, and the important thing about using Excel. So, you know, you could potentially use um, other software packages as well, like Spotlight, where, you know, you need to input numbers um, individually 
um, they don't corkscrew. Uh, and then what you can do is you can calculate your corkscrew balances here and then up, you know, export these out as CSV um, and then upload them into the respective software. Um, it's a bit cumbersome, but if, um, if the level is appropriate for you, then yeah, perfectly fine. Um, you know, it's, it's, I guess, a good way to try and leverage all the software that you have. Um, you know, again, I guess we, again, sit on Excel because it allows us to do a lot without, uh, without looking at other platforms. But yeah, you know, I know a lot of people have um, other ways of approaching it. So it's all fine. What works for you is good. <laughs>